All right. What's up? And welcome back to the Spot Burn Podcast, brought to you by Musky Fool. We are your hosts, Dan Donovan. And Bam Bam. We're happy to be back, folks. We got episode three. It's going to be a good one. It's currently about the end of March in Wisconsin, which means the Shack Nasties are peaking. It's been a long winter. We still got snow, still a little cold, but things are improving. Today, we're going to get into how we keep those Shack Nasties at bay. How do we get through the winter, get ready for some musky fishing, and uh, what to do if you happen into an accidental musky. We're going to cover a bunch, but before we do that, Let's plug two of our sponsors. First off, we got Cortland Line Company. Huge thank you to those guys for coming on board and sponsoring the podcast. They make incredible fishing lines no matter what you are chasing or how you're doing it. They got braided mono. They got conventional lines. They got fly fishing lines, tarpon, musky, bass, trout. They got you covered no matter what it is. It's currently trout season and steelhead season here in Wisco. So I am... Um, I've been digging the trout boss. I've got that on my four weight. I've also, uh, hopefully, uh, we'll see what the, we'll see what things hold in the future, but hopefully I get out for a little bit more steel heading using that long belly distance. We also got stealth craft boats, awesome sponsor makers of some of the finest river boats on the market. Um, as we record this, we are actually hoping that one of the stealth craft boats comes home to her resting place. Josh, you are you're waiting for a boat right now are you not correct yeah i'm waiting for shamu which is an 18 foot stealth weld by stealth craft so she's on her way home she got pretty beat up, up last year had to get some uh fixes done but yeah she'll be here shortly i believe big old jet motor on the back too i uh, i'm in a similar position except i gotta probably get my hooligan a little repaired i'm hoping to squeak in maybe one more trout float here in March before I uh, send her back to get some, some new rubber. But that is not why we are here. Let's get into some uh, current updates. It's been a pretty busy spring. We here at Muskie Fool just wrapped up a long and awesome trade show season. We hit the Muskie Expo circuit, Chicago, Milwaukee, and then uh, just last week uh, or a couple weeks ago now, Wausau. And it was awesome. We just wanted to come on, give a little brief recap. Um, we saw so many good people. You came out to support us, talked to so many people at the Muskie Expo, which is really a conventional Muskie Expo, and talked to so many people that just said they came to the show for to see Muskie Fool. Um, fly fishing folks that had never really been to the Expo before, and um, man, that means a lot to us. That really, really gets us excited. Um, we got to talk to all sorts of cool folks, good friends, made some new friends, and uh, hopefully got a few of you guys set up and hooked on uh, some musky fly fishing for 2023. But um, yeah, overall, we'll be back at the trade show circuit next year, but just wanted to give everybody a big thank you. Um, that's why we do it so that we can see all of you in person for folks that can't make it to the shop or make it, uh, you know, want to want to feel some of the bucktail in person, see some of the flies in person. We hope you like it. Definitely let us know um, if you did. If you didn't, tough luck. We'll see you. We'll see you next time. Uh, we also are not done with events here in Wisco. Um, coming up soon, it'll be pretty much a little under a month from now, 420. Yeah, you heard that right. 420, we will have the Fly Fishing Film Tour back in Madison at the Barrymore. Um, should be pretty much the last hurrah before fishing season jumps off and uh, gets going. You get to watch a bunch of films. There's going to be giveaways. It's going to be awesome and rowdy. We hope to see you all there. If you can't make it to that, there are several different fundraiser annual events going on in April as well. You got the Trout Unlimited, a couple of the local chapters. I believe there's one in April on the 22nd or 3rd. Um, and then there's another one in May. We got the Cap Cities annual fundraiser and the Wisconsin Smallmouth Alliance. Those are all going to be on the website at muskiefool.com under the events tab. So go check them out. We hope to see you there. We got one more PSA, Josh. Anything, any public service announcements we need to hit? I think, uh, oh, fishing licenses. Yeah. Re-up them, folks. Get out there. It's been a long winter, but you still got to be legal. So Keep it uh, also, legal. Also, if you're heading to 
one of the Great Lake tributaries, make sure to get that stamp picked up as well. That is right. They expire here in Wisconsin at the end of March. So if you're a Wisconsin resident or one of those folks that comes to Wisconsin to fish because we have the greatest fishing in the Midwest, get your new licenses. It's pretty easy, right, on uh, Wisconsin DNR Go Wild website. All right, let's get into some meat. Let's let's start chewing on it. Um, first, let's set the stage a little bit. As we talked about earlier, uh, we are at full anticipation mode. It does not get, uh, you know, March is when things start to turn, but it still feels like musky season is so fucking far away. Oh my God, it's, it's, it's only like a little over a month, but man, it feels like it's forever. Yeah, how many t flies do you think you've tied this winter, Dan? I have tied uh, – that's a good question. I've tied all of three musky flies. It's pretty embarrassing. There's a reason for that. I've tied a, a boatload of trout flies, but uh, I'm currently handicapped. But uh, I got to tie a couple musky flies over the weekend, and uh, it definitely started going. I can't start too soon, though, because it kind of is just – you know, December, January, especially a trade show season, I didn't have a lot of free time to sit down and crank them out. But between now and May 6th, it's time to hit the vice. But we got a lot more to do here, especially in March, than just tie flies. Um, and I think we're going to talk a little bit about that. Probably, I don't know what you think, Josh, but in my opinion, outside of musky season, March is one of my favorite months of the year, I kind of March 15th to April 15th. You got to ignore musky. But we got a lot to do, do we not? Yes, sir. We got a lot of species heating up right now. So the steelhead run coming out of the Great Lakes system, it starts in the southern part of the state, obviously, because uh, that's warmer, and then it heads towards the northern part of the state. So a lot of the folks right now are heading down there. Uh, they're chasing the, the fresh chrome, as they say, that's coming up into the tributary systems. And that's an absolute blast. You're fishing these extremely powerful strong fish that can take you on the ride of your life and, and you're putting them on a, a a fairly small rod actually for their size so it's it's just a such a treat to have in wisconsin or in the midwest in general and and say what really you will just... about go ahead oh yeah say what you will about all the haters that these aren't steelhead they're still fun as heck to get on a fly rod lake run rainbows who cares? Yep. It's fishing for something that swims. It's what we got here. They're beautiful. Um, but that's not the end. That's not the end of it. We got, you know, we're going to get into each, each one a little bit, but like, in my opinion, this is like the, my, the next 30 days are some of the best trout fishing that we have to offer. Cause you can pretty much do anything. You're going to get hatches of bugs. You're going to have tons of subsurface action streamer bite, especially with the spring runoff starts to get pretty good. Um, you got pre-spawn smallies. You got some pike fishing if you keep it legal in the right zones. You got really pretty much everything is going but muskies right now. So it's it's pretty fun and probably part of the reason, I don't know about you, but it's also part of the reason I just struggle to justify going out of state for muskies. It's kind of popular to do more so February because if you go out of state right now, there's a chance that they're they're spawning. I know down south, Kentucky, Tennessee, they're probably paired up as we speak um yep. we just you know we don't get a lot of time to do all this stuff steelhead trout smallmouth um and now now really is that window and like you said dan if you switch that mindset just look at it as this is the training ground to get ready for musky season so hone might those be the skills only month in. you catch fish yeah might be the only month you, month you catch fish all year <laughs> yeah, yeah it's super fun you get to go outside play with all your new toys you got for christmas or the holidays and and just hone those skills back in knock all the rust off from the last uh winter yeah it's always uh it's always a treat i mean we've probably been fishing we've both been fishing already before march but that first time where you you know you put the 12 weights and 10 weights down in december you're pretty beaten and broken and then the next thing you pick up is like a four <laughs> weight and it's like it's a little different oh boy yeah on like a stream that's four feet wide for a trout that's eight to 12 inches. It's like the first time out, I'm always like, what the fuck am I doing? What am I doing? Why am I doing this? 
Yeah, you spend the, the first half of the day just undoing all of your tangles in the woods and getting yeah. the ice out of your guides and whatnot. You feel like you're walking around a, a feather factory covered in tar. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> Precisely. Well, let's get into it a little bit. You talked about uh, Steelhead, Lake Run Rainbows for all the purists out there. Um, now's the time. I mean, we probably got the first, as we're recording this, We've probably already had the first big run kind of in the southern zone, southern tributaries, first big run of fresh fish. Most of the brown trout are probably still hanging around, but they're on their way. They're on their move, um, you know, and it won't be long with another little rush of water, whether it's spring runoff. We got a little bit of snow that's going to melt or um, some rain that's going to push a whole new batch of fish in there. How are, what are you, how are you, what, talk me through what you're doing as far as gear, rods and, and whatnot, Josh. Sure. Yeah, we just wrapped up a trip a couple of weeks back uh, down the southern part of the state. So pretty much the whole crew down there was using single handed fly rods in that um, probably seven to nine weight range, uh, usually floating lines, intermediate lines. Some of the group was throwing egg patterns under indicators and some of us were were swinging um, streamers across current seams and, and whatnot. But unfortunately for us that particular weekend the weather just it turned so terrible um the the rivers all blew out the day before the weather dropped 20 degrees and a, and a huge cold front and blizzard rolled in so uh we didn't uh we didn't happen to to tag any that weekend but as soon as we left of course it uh, it all started heating up and the reports are back in full swing that folks are are starting to bag them for sure. Yeah, that would, and that's probably a good example though of the the ebbs and flows of the spring steelhead. Is you really you really are chasing fish that are on the move, and more even deeper than that, you're chasing flows, you're chasing water quality. Because um, it was, I mean, you guys were there for three days, and just it was when you could go, and the conditions did not participate. And then right as you guys were packing up and headed home, I believe Angel Gabriel. Mr. Gay Park headed down and, uh, you know, kind of just hit everything on the fall. And, and it was perfect. I think he put five in the, in the, in the net in like, uh, uh, afternoon on egg patterns. And that's, it's just how it goes. you 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 definitely have to, it's why people get kind of so, so obsessed about it is you truly are chasing conditions. And when those conditions are right, the fish are usually there willing and able, um, eaten kind of just about anything. Eggs are obviously, more consistent uh but if you've spent any time <coughs> excuse me um if you've spent any time uh hucking indicator rigs with split shot and egg patterns you know there are more enjoyable ways to fly fish and uh, i think that's where where the swinging comes in for sure i will say it's a pretty fun game it's very diverse from the the musky grind out in the boats on the big rivers and whatnot and, and during float trips you're navigating through a concrete jungle lots of heavy traffic trying to figure out where you can park in these urban environments and you getting any fist you know, fights in the river a little urban warfare did you have to you know pull out the big guns no we did not uh i think there's a couple spots though a little bit north of where we were at where i've heard tales of fist to cuffs going down on the shoreline but yeah we had we had quite the squad we had eight guys so it would probably take an army to take us down but yeah it's a totally different game uh one of the cool things about it is if you do get cold you do get bored you can always stop into a coffee shop or grab some lunch during the day that's a little bit different than committing to a 13-hour float trip so it's yeah, yeah. it's a totally different mindset different ball game but such a blast to be able to take advantage of in the midwest yeah and for so many reasons it's different like it's uh rivers and areas uh where where we go to fish whether you're up on the north shore or the east shore um here in wisconsin that really we don't target the rest of the year you know you're, you're kind of in spots that you're not really i mean there's other fish species in there but for whatever reason, they're just not where we're headed once kind of May and June and all the way through November starts rolling. Um, you know, obviously there's a fall fall steelhead bite, but I think most of us are a little preoccupied in fall, at least here at Muskie <laughs> Fool. 
What about, um, I guess let's touch on, you know, we talked a little bit about flies. So uh, you got kind of the down and dirty, heavily weighted uh, indicator rigs, you know, whether you got yarn eggs, McFly foam eggs, beads, eggs, 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 egg sucking leeches, uh, you know, you got dirty worms. And then of course you mentioned swinging, swinging streamers, uh, which is also probably a more, um, you know, you're also going to pick up some Browns doing that too. And if you, if you hit it right, you know, some of the biggest Brown trout in the state of Wisconsin, uh, get caught in some of these tributaries. So it can be, it can be pretty wild. Um, as far as fly lines go, and this is another, maybe why it's, it's different is just the techniques whether it's the fly line or the casting or how you're approaching water, you know, when we're musky fishing a river, we're cruising down river, pounding spots, you know, even if we know where they're at, we're covering water and that's not the best tactic for steelhead. You know, you're kind of hanging out in one spot and uh, the fish are either there or they're not, you're going to go check another spot, but you're not, you're casting a lot to the same spot, making sure you get, multiple drifts getting it down getting it higher up in the water column uh you're usually in the river covered you know the banks don't provide a lot of back casting room so we're roll casting and big long men's and that's where some of the fly line changes come in so you know you got a couple several different options i think back to josh's point most of us at least here at musky fool are um you know using the single hand rods we're whipping out our seven to eight weights um you can use switch rods you can use spay rods if you're specifically swinging, but again, our rivers are not really set up and big enough for that. It can be done. Um, and that's where a couple of different lines really come into play the SA and Andro. And then, um, I'm a big fan of that long belly distance from, from Cortland. You got a big, long head that kind of widens out and makes roll casting a dream. Something we really, you know, how many times do you roll cast for muskies in a season? Probably none. Um, and if you don't have a roll cast dialed, um, and that's kind of just the basics for steelhead, you're going to, you're going to need it. So it's fun. It mixes it up. That's for sure. Yes, sir. Yeah. One other uh, tactic I'll just yeah, add to really quick is floating line with a sinking head. Cortland also mm -hmm. makes one of those sinking head kits too. And you can customize that depending on the length that you're looking for, the depth you want to get to. But that's a really nice feature. If you only want to carry around a floating line during the day, you can quickly swap on that sinking head. And that can also come into play with these other species we're going to talk about too. And I stick to, I'm a monogamous guy. So you're, you're talking more about swinging. Um, and uh, is that, is that correct? When you're putting on the, the sinking heads and helping it get down a little bit? Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah. I, I was primarily <laughs> swinging that weekend when we were, we we're fishing down there, but, uh, but yeah, Gabe, obviously he had the program dialed, which was, which were the eggs. Eggs, eggs with some tungsten split shot. Um, what else? So the next thing we got, and like I said earlier, probably my favorite time of year for two reasons, the trout fish uh, in the driftless. One, conditions just set up really well. And two, I, I personally don't have a lot of distractions. You're done with trade show season. You can't really fish for muskies. You can't at all fish for them in Wisconsin. Um, and overall, condition-wise, you know, you don't have feet of snow usually. You don't have super high overgrowth of the, you know, trees and weeds and all sorts of things. It's, it's pretty easy. You usually have pretty good flows, so you're not in that low crystal clear winter program. Um, and it kind of sets itself up to be pretty great. You know, you got BWOs, uh, blue winged olives, probably going to start popping off. Um, you know, midges, pretty much a uh, common occurrence. You like to nymph. This is a great time of year to nymph. You want to run dropper rigs. You can do that. And then what I look forward to is hopefully what's going to set up for this weekend or early next week. You get a little bit of precipitation, muddies up the water, and uh, you can start really going after some streamer streamer fishing which is a whole lot of fun have you been have been able to get out at all josh on the trout grind in uh in march got any plans to... i have i haven't this particular season but i will say and to uh, build off your previous point is that the the april time is super fun when the weather heats up the rivers come up a little bit that temperature that water temperature increases 
and you're getting some nice storms, the streamer is game Jordy? is just, it's incredible. Yeah. Jordy, come here. Say hi to everybody, buddy. Come here. Jordy's in the house. First podcast for Jordy. But yeah, what Josh oh, was saying, the streamer, streamer fishing, and especially like we're talking, um, you know, in early winter, uh, it's usually slow, slow streamers, dead drifted, smaller. And this is the time of year, March, April, even into May, um, when you can really start to more aggressively fish for them. Bigger streamers, yeah. some of the bigger trout that you're going to see uh, are probably like now and, and into, you know, other than late fall, like right now for the next 30 days. Um, and that's one of my favorite times to go. You just get a lot more aggressive behavior, which is, which is really sweet. Um, what are you talk to me about gear? We're going to run through it a little bit here. What are, what are we, what are we using, um, here in the drift list for our trout fishing? Uh, I'm running usually like a three weight down there, a seven, six, three weight. Cause I'm going after some small, uh, native brook trout streams and, and whatnot. But if you're fishing, in a bigger section of the water you're probably going to be getting into that five six weight caliber especially if you're going to start hucking streamers i uh, would highly recommend getting a, a six weight as part of the the program but yeah a three weight is just it's an incredible experience especially if you're going from a 10 to 12 weight like you're saying down to a three weight it's just a, a whole new world you got to basically relearn how to cast. The presentation is different, but you can get down and dirty in all of the, the little creeks down there and and uh, do some rummaging through the jungle and get after them with it. I love how backwards we are. We're so messed up in the head. We're like, the normal thing to throw is a 12 weight. And then, you know, yeah, we can go. We'll go down to two <laughs> weights. Where, where, you know, out west, I'd be surprised how often they throw 12 weights. But yeah, I, I don't, we, we have a little bit bigger rivers and creeks down here. So I usually four weight, nine footers, you know, four weight, eight and a half foot. Um, it's kind of my dry fly nymph setup. I usually bring that one and then um, either a six or seven. Seven's a little bit big, but there are some big rivers. And um, like I said earlier, you can, you'd really be surprised. If you're looking for a new trout goal for the year, challenge yourself to fish big streamers we're talking four at the minimum to six inch whether it's bang tails dungeons um you know it's it, it'll surprise you it is a little bit more like musky fishing you're not going to you know have 70 fish days typically uh but you might be figure eighting a 20 inch trout which is pretty cool if you have not done it there's also a few opportunities um to fish lower down in some of the systems where those water temps are still kind of ideal um, not too warm, which they'll get in summer. And then those trout kind of boogie out of there. I wish I had a current report for you, though, that was more relevant. I'm excited to get out. Last uh, two weeks ago, Jen and I were up in Viroqua area, and it was it was still just fucking winter, man. It was 29 degrees, windy, snow flurries, you know, long leaders, midge hatches in the middle of the day. It's tough. Um, and I think especially this year, we've heard some reports here in Wisconsin that it was it was a tough winter. It was mm -hmm. not, you know, not easy pickings. Um, the only fish we were able to get into that weekend, you had to sneak upstream, kind of feed them line downstream with a long leader and uh, make sure you weren't spooking or lining them, which again, it, for us musky heathens, it forces you to get outside your comfort zone. If that's not what you're used to doing, if that's not what you do all season, you know, it's, it's very different, but, uh, it's fun. Not ideal for March. I'm ready for some more aggressive trout. I'll tell you that. Yes, sir. Hey, Dan, you mind if I let my dog out quick? He's Go for it. Be crazy. Go for it, Jordy. I'm gonna save Go all pee. the listeners. Go pee. Jordy, let's go. Upstairs. It's okay, Jordy. We appreciate. Uh, so this is the first podcast we've had both dogs in the in the booth, and if you can't tell, um. Josh and I are not in the same location this time of this time. We uh, Josh is up in his musky lair. Um, I am in the dungeon. Um, we, you know, we we wanted to keep the gravy train rolling and keep some content coming for you guys. So we uh, we decided to record and probably will record several future episodes remotely. Um, 
but hopefully audio quality, video quality, everything stays pretty groovy and, uh, and you guys like what you hear, but we're back. And I think we were going to start talking about, um, Oh, I guess one thing to mention, and this is just a shameless plug for Musky Fool because it's probably at this point, one of the most common questions we get, which makes sense. And it's, do you guys have trout flies? And the answer is a resounding yes. Uh, we have more trout flies than we've ever had. We have an incredible selection. Big thanks to Nick and Gabe in the shop who have brought some of their out west experience back to Wisconsin and made sure we were well stocked. I mean, we're talking dry flies. We have some foam, not really foam season, but dry flies, everything you'll need. Uh, nymphs, wets, uh, emergers, tungsten, jigs worms and given that we're musky fool we have a lot of streamers from small to big um you know all the gallop flies and tons in between so come on out check it out if you haven't been to the shop i guarantee you will not be disappointed if you are especially if you're purely a trout uh fisherman um we got it hooked up and we'd love to hear your feedback we'd love to hear what you think we always got room to improve let's uh what else do we got going on though josh we got, we talked about trout, driftless trout, steelhead. There's a couple other things going down in, uh, in March. Yes, sir. Should we jump into some pike fishing? Yeah, that's an interesting one. Um, and I think this is probably an area where there's, uh, I don't know, a lot of confusion in Wisconsin, uh, pike fishing. If you go right now on the regs, it says pike fishing ends it goes from uh, first Saturday in May to the first Saturday in March. And that's kind of what it says, which would mean that right now pike fishing is closed. Correct. But that is not always the case. This is where the regulations, you got to kind of peel the layers back because there are specific watersheds, mainly, honestly, almost exclusively, I think, don't quote me on that, but mainly rivers where there is some open pike fishing. But, but yeah. this is like the warning, check your regulations. This is not us saying that pike fishing is open. Um, they are typically spawning or about to start spawning this time of year. Um, they're one of the first species to spawn when the ice comes off in the warm water fisheries. So you got to check. Musky fool is not telling you that you can go full bore pike fishing, but if you find the right spots, it can be pretty lights out. Yeah, yes, sir. Spots. There's a, there's a couple of fisheries in Wisconsin that it's legal to be targeting pike currently. Now, with the legalities set aside, <clears throat> this is where morals come into play because right at ice out is going to be when they're at peak spawn. If not, you're hitting the, the tail end of the spawn. <clears throat> they're one of the first warm water species to spawn, so they typically spawn anywhere in the uh, the mid 30s to low 40s right around 40 degrees so if if it's hard to get your boat in there due to ice conditions chances are they're spawning so you really got to be aware of that <clears throat> if you start banging them up pretty good that that most likely means you're hitting the spawn so give them some space you know go do something else um maybe go chase some walleyes because that's probably open in the river system at that time but yeah, just give them some space. Um, and then as far as post spawn goes, <clears throat> those fish are going to be super hungry and they're going to, they're going to start going to their deeper submarine holes. So you can find those fish exiting those, those shallower spawning grounds, and they're going to start running to the deeper holes. And you're going to, you're going to want to throw a lot of, you know, th that five to seven inch fly range it with, uh, primarily like chartreuse types of colors, bright colors. They're going to be super active and chances are you're going to bag one of the, the biggest pike of the season during that time. There's some big ones. There's some unicorns out there. I, I would say uh, big, especially in that 45 plus range pike are pretty tough to come by in Wisconsin. We get asked about this a oh, lot. Yeah. There's actually somebody that told us to do a little bit of a pike tactics episode. We're going to just, kind of scratch the surface today um but that's part of the reason we don't do a lot of dedicated pike fishing is we have a lot of slime rockets this is this is lando muskies and um 
I think typically you see the muskies out compete at least in the size range pike, which is kind of counterintuitive because you do have the pike spawning sooner. They're in post spawn. Usually why muskies are spawning. It's kind of been that old wives tale that all those post spawn pike are eating the spawning or the just recently spawned musky fry. You know, there's some truth to that, but tends to indicate that when there's pike and musky together, musky get bigger. And uh, that's really what we see throughout Wisconsin. Um, I, I mean, I would, I don't know what you think, Josh, but I would say like a 45 inch pike in Wisconsin is pretty much equivalent to a 50 inch plus musky. Absolutely. I echo that all day long for sure. Yeah. What, um, do you notice any differences in, in post-spawn pike fishing compared to musky? Um, like post-spawn musky, post-spawn pike, you, you see any notable differences? I've honestly found in our fisheries where where we're hitting most of the time, it's actually easier to hit to get into those post spawn muskies. So like when June comes around, <clears throat> post spawn, they're gonna be way easier to get personally than those pike are post spawn. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just I've been targeting muskies longer. But yeah, there's something about that that's a good question though dano and what um as far as you know pike fishing dedicated pike fishing what kind of gear are we run in here you know floating lines intermediate lines uh typically targeting a pretty shallow but like yep. eight weights on weights uh usually yeah we try to limit ourselves to not bringing anything larger than an eight weight which we'll touch on in just a moment here but yeah, uh, typically your ideal pike setup is probably going to be an eight, maybe a nine weight. And then a lot of floating lines or intermediate lines are great. Those fish are going to be, they're going to be shallow uh, transitioning to those deeper spots. So slow presentations, um, kind of moderately sized flies are going to be the ticket for that. Yeah. And not to give any spoilers away, but this is a good public service announcement to look up what the difference between a pike and a muskie is. Um, there's a lot of confusion about that. Sometimes we're going to hopefully get a, a pretty funny story in a later episode about how confusing those two can be. Um, I personally, if I'm doing pike fishing this time of year and it's, it's an illegal watershed, I try to find the spots or at least the rivers where there are no muskie even around. Um, Cause I think that keeps it easy, keeps it clean. And, um, you know, you don't, you don't get into any issues with that, but moving on from pike fishing, it's, it's one of the things on the menu. Um, you just, it's not as readily available as the trout and steelhead. You got to check the regs, make sure the water that you're fishing this time of year is open. If it's not open right now, it opens up, uh, the first Saturday in May. Um, one thing though, that is open all year round now in Wisconsin, smallmouth bass. Heck yeah. Talk to me, Josh. The cash crop of Wisconsin. Smallmouth bass. All right. So if you would have asked me this question, even like three years ago, I would have said, well, I don't even give a crap about them till Memorial Day. But the last couple of years, we've been banging them up pre-spawn in the spring. And I think we, we cracked the code on them. So smallmouth, they actually spawn a little deeper than some of the other species. And they're going to be one of you know, kind of like the secondary tertiary warm water species to start spawning. Their peak uh, temperature level is right in that 40 to 50 degree range as well. So the river's heating up a little bit more and you're going to want to look for, uh, you know, really nice, slow moving back eddies, bays, things like that. Um, sometimes they'll be hanging out on like a really slow bank that's adjacent to a really swift current seam. And just and then, to ask, uh, just to dive in a little bit deeper, 40 to 50 degrees, upper 40s, upper 50s is what you're saying is peak pre-spawn, peak time to target them on the pre-spawn. Because they, smallies do spawn, if, if you look at like pike, then musky, then smallies kind of is the order of events. Because, But that's when you're saying is, is kind of an ideal time to get after it and start catching some pre-spawn. Yep, yeah. I might have oh, yeah. misspoke there. The uh, upper no, I don't 40s think you did. 50s, I was just clarifying for everybody. You're good. Yeah, upper upper forties and fifties. That's peak pre spawn. So they're going to be spawning at that magic number of sixty. 
So anything below that, they're going to be staging, getting ready to spawn. And that's the time where they're going to, you know, you're going to be able to get it in on the action and get some of those, those nice smallies. And don't be afraid to throw some big streamers. We saw those guys eating, you know, four and a half, five inch long streamers in the last couple of years. We were, we were swinging those out off of current seams. We we're working them through, um, you know, those transition zones where they're coming out of the deep, heading towards their staging areas and everything like that. So, yeah, this is a great time of year to get in on the smallie action. Really all the way through Memorial Day, too. I mean, it really depends how the spring shapes up and how warm it gets, how fast. But, man, I can tell you several years of absolutely shit musky fishing uh, when the season opens down here in the south and first Saturday in May and similarly, you know, later in the northern zone. It's absolutely shit musky season. You might even be seeing muskies paired up still. And that usually means smallmouth bass are eating big musky flies because uh, they're kind of right in that end of pre-spawn. And it, it, it can be frustrating if you're targeting muskies, but it, uh, like, you know, we mentioned earlier, you change your perspective a little bit <coughs> and, uh, and you go after these, you know, with a, these smallmouth with a dedicated approach. It sounds like it's a hoot. Um, I, I definitely don't do a ton of it personally. I'm more of the frustrated musky angler when the season opens catching smallmouth. I literally caught my biggest smallmouth, one of my biggest smallmouth all time last year on opening day of musky season on a big 10 inch musky fly, 10 inches long. It was like a 19 inch, uh, 19 and a half inch smallmouth. So, it, you know, like Josh said, do not be afraid to, to overgun it and, and get some big, big patterns out there. What else? Absolutely. Never, never underestimate what a, a fish is capable of eating. It's ridiculous. Especially a smallmouth <laughs> bass. Holy moly. Um, oh yeah. So we got, we got one other kind of topic, uh, on the, on the species to target, uh, which is probably the most popular thing to target for an angler, a general angler this time of year. Um, yep. I know I don't spend a lot of time doing it anymore. Uh, which is the spring walleye run. And that's typically, again, like pike fishing, you got to check your regulations. This is tends to be a river only program um, to target these fish on the spring runs. You know, you, you see the, uh, the classic spots uh, in Southern Wisconsin and Northern Wisconsin, but talk to me a little bit about that, Josh, what do we got going on with the spring walleye run? Well said, Dan. Yeah. This is one of those unicorn fish. I actually don't see very many of them. Uh, caught on the fly every year but there are certain cats out there that seem to have kind of cracked the code one of them of which being hunter dorn uh he actually enjoys going out there with a spay rod this time of year and swinging clousers through current seams and whatnot and he's uh been able to find them that way so uh i haven't done a lot of you know spring walleye targeting i haven't done much targeting of walleye in general on the fly but yeah it's probably the same type of uh program you're you're going to be uh chasing those smallies with like those those smaller streamers those moderately sized streamers like that three and a half to to four yeah, and a half yeah. inch size range and then swinging them across current seams because they're they're running all over the place this time of year yeah and also just another I think along with um, kind of the bass, they, they really help indicate where we are in the cycle of spring. I can remember, man, it was probably 2017 now. Again, another opening weekend of absolute shit musky fishing because it was a late spring. And in the spots where I would go target post-spawn muskies in the river, you just had schools of walleye still st kind of in their last tail of the run. and that was probably the last time I really targeted, uh, you know, you kind of had to be like, all right, well, that means the muskies aren't going to be ready to go. Um, but we were, you know, like you just said, clousers, we were dead drifting um, clousers through pretty heavy current. Um, mm -hmm. And that was a lot of fun. Pretty good, pretty good eaters that time of year. Haven't done it since then. And, um, but yeah, just a good, like I said, good kind of barometer of where things are at because they're usually, easy to spot. If you can't spot the fish themselves, you can for sure spot the anglers because they come out in droves, especially the gear <laughs> fishermen on the rivers targeting those spring walleye. 
but kind of avoided it up until now. And I think we're going to move into the, the second, uh, second topic and more of the thing we're going to spot burn here this evening. Um, but it comes up and it's a prevalent theme, especially when you are pike fishing or walleye fishing the river systems in spring in Wisconsin. What are you often running into, Josh? The occasional bycatch of a muskie. It happens yes. to the best of us. And the accidental even muskie. If, even with best intentions, it still will happen. Um, just like I said, don't uh, you don't underestimate the size of a fly officially. You know, a muskie is on the opposite end of the spectrum too in the spring. Sometimes they'll they'll start eating those really small flies too. And it's inevitable. If you're out there, it's going to happen. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do if it happens to you? Well, there's a couple things you should do. First of all, you should not take it out of the water and start taking a bunch of photos and plastering that all over social media. You muskie know, season happens, is closed. It's closed, y'all. Yeah. So, I mean, it's happened to me. It's happened to a bunch of the guys that I know. Um, so keep that fish wet, keep it in the water, uh, get your tools out, get that fish back to its, its home, you know, as soon as humanly possible. The worst thing you can possibly do is, is start banging that fish around in the boat and, and plastering it all over social media. That's not a good look for you. It's not a good look for anybody else. And it, it's counterproductive to what we're trying to achieve here with everything. So, yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm definitely probably at risk of burning a few bridges, but this, as we, uh, as we titled it, this is the spot burn podcast. And um, this one really gets me grumpy. I mean, it, it's, it's not a surprise. It's not like anybody that's a dedicated walleye angler can be like, Oh, I didn't know. I didn't, you know, like there are muskies around muskies tend to follow walleyes for the better part of the season you've walleye fish long enough, you know that people accidentally catch them. And I think that's part of the rub is there's this really gray area of like, I mean, first of all, there's people that have no fucking idea what the season is. They're just like, ah, I've heard it a million times. Okay. Millions, a little excessive. I've heard it several times before. Well, what do you mean? It's a game fish and we can catch them. And the answer is no. The muskie season opens in Wisconsin, May 6th. And the last Saturday in May in the Northern zone, let's just, let's just pause and repeat that muskie season is closed in March and April and does not open until May. And then I think it's kind of what you just talked about, which is this whole, you know, there's really no bragging rights. This is not why we do it, but there's no bragging rights associated with catching a muskie in spring on walleye gear. Yes. We all know it's possible. Yes, we could probably catch a pile of muskies if we targeted them in spring on walleye gear or small flies, but it's it's just not something you're allowed to do. Um, and I think that also brings in that kind of what Josh was talking about of like, yet you should be prepared for it. You should be prepared for it with the right release tools. I think this is a really easy, you know, we're not trying to sound the the, the huge alarm here because we're talking about muskies in pretty comfortable water temps water temps are usually sub 50 degrees even sub you know right around 45 so the water temps are safe but we're at risk of catching these fish on light gear um and i think that prevents a longer fight or in you know enables a longer fight more lactic acid buildup and it, it puts it at risk and then you kind of like i said you get into that gray area of um you know if you're on top of a spot, most walleye fishermen are using electronics. If you're not getting walleyes and you're catching muskies, you're in the wrong spot. Probably. Um, mm -hmm. these fish tend to be close to each other, but not on top of each other. And, um, I think that's another indication we've heard it again. I I'm trying to keep it in neutral, but we've heard it several times at the shop, several times growing up, the folks who are just like, man, we were banging up muskies. We were just catching them left and right and spraying on, on walleye jigs. And uh, it's one thing to have an accidental one here or there, but it's kind of that accidental, I hate air quotes, but it's very apropos. Uh, those aren't accidental. If, you, if you're sitting on a spot catching multiple muskies, move, go somewhere else. Yeah. Get the hell out of there. Don't come back for another month. 
Yeah, Dan. The good news is, like, people are piss off our walleye fishermen right now, so that's okay. I hopefully, but like seriously, it's it's just. Uh, yeah. Just be nice and to them. Be, and don't be one of those people either that goes out there and is like, "Yeah, we're just pike fishing with twelve weights and fourteen inch flies." That's what I I said earlier. You know, force yourself to not bring anything bigger than an eight weight. You won't even have that temptation. We're humans. We're stupid. The DNR put these <laughs> rules and regulations in place to protect us. Protect yourself. Don't even make it an issue. Don't bring your giant flies. Go out there with the sole intention of, okay, we're targeting pike where it's legal. And if we happen to stumble upon a muskie, we're going to get it back to its habitat as soon as possible. And we're going to go to someplace else where we start finding some pike here. Yeah. And you mentioned it earlier. It sounds so catty, but it's the, the pictures, the, the, the hero shots of Muskie caught like, Oh, look at me. Look at what we did today. And, and I think I can take both sides. I can see it's accidental. You're having fun. Um, but at the same time, it's, you know, usually folks that, Oh God, we're going to just sound elitist. I can hear it in my, I can hear it, but it's not, it's not where we're coming from. Um, you know, it's folks that are not tend to be targeting muskies all year long. It's not, you know, the muskie anglers, walleye fishing, they know what to do when they get a big muskie in the net or they get a big muskie on the end of their line. Um, they probably have the right tools in the boat. They got long nose pliers, you know, they have hook removal devices. Uh, but this is not the time to bump the fish and bring them in the boat. If you want to get in trouble, you, you know, that starts to get into the possession and yep. you know what were you doing if you just want to stay ethical and keep your musky karma intact um just let them go um let them go right away we don't need to see that on the internet and i think where that comes from is i'll admit it yeah i want to catch more muskies so there's a little bit of me that's just jealous of you walleye fishermen out there banging them up wishing you know i'm sitting there just waiting to go for musky season and here i see on social media all these big giant muskies being caught on purple fucking hair jigs but um really where i think the responsibility comes in to not take those pictures to not post them is the people that don't know you know they just see a picture of a musky and they oh cool i can do that muskies are biting oh what are they biting on purple walleye jigs and i think that is where that gray area turns to be pretty black and white is, you know, that's, that's what social media is, is it's a big microphone. Um, and if, you know, you feel the need to take that picture, post that picture, it justifies it to somebody else. You might know the rules. You might know that was accidental and you're just saying, Hey, sorry, oops. We, you were just taking a picture quick. We let it go. It swam off. It swam off fine. But the next guy might not, the next gal might not. And I think that's where we do have a responsibility. Um, and you guys, we're not we're not beating around the bush. You got two card carrying musky fools here. This is what we eat, sleep, and breathe for. If we don't say this, we you know who's gonna? Not the walleye fishermen. Um, so that no. we we do realize we're sitting a little bit on our biases here, but at the same time, uh, <laughs> we're gonna lean right to fuck in and just and just call a spade a spade. Exactly. Like, do you ever find presents during the holidays when you weren't supposed to and you thought it was going to be so cool, but then in all actuality, when the day finally came to open your presents, you knew exactly what you were going to get. It just took all the shine off of that. And it's the same thing. It's like, if you, you start going uh, out great there. Great example. Do you go, do you, not to interrupt you, but it's a perfect example, Josh. If you find those presents, do you go put that new uh, Aaron Rodgers, New York Jets jersey on and go downstairs and be like, Mom, look at what I got. Hey, everybody, it's December 12th and I'm wearing my new Christmas present. No. Yeah. You fucking hide that shit. You may have stumbled on the perfect metaphor. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, put it back before Mom finds out. Picture the the DNR as your mom. The (laughs) DNR is your mom telling you, get that present back in the closet right now. If you want Santa to come next year, you put that shit back and you do not tell anybody about it. Yes, sir. We're all stewards of the river, folks, and the lakes. Respect the golden rule. Respect the fish. 
Respect their habitat. You'll be a better person for it. And then I couldn't agree more, but then there's, this is, this is back to that gray area. I think it's also a responsibility to be prepared to catch a muskie. Like we talked about, you know, um, yes, it's, it's, it's going to happen accidentally, genuinely accidentally. You know, we can't control yes. this, you know, we're even with the best technology, you know, live scope actually kind of makes it less gray because you can see the fish and a walleye looks a whole lot different than a muskie on a live scope, but be prepared. Um, if you don't target muskies regularly, maybe you should think about adding a long nose, uh, pliers into the box, uh, bring it along. You know, maybe you should think about just picking up a, a hook cutter, just the things that are going to prevent you from getting in that hairy situation. And this is where things go south fast, whether it's catching muskies on walleye gear in spring or catching muskies in the peak summer on bass gear. It's the most sensitive time for those fish because they have light tackle and they have potentially an angler that doesn't know how to handle a fish. I mean, you can see it right behind Josh. They're not nice, happy fish. And if you've never handled one before, um, it can go south fast. You know, it's not the time to pull out the boga grips. It's not the time to pull that fish in the boat and let it flop around and wait until it spits a hook. I think be quick, be decisive, and um, just try and get it back. At the end of the day, you're there to catch walleye, so you can go put some good uh, table fare. Uh, you're not there to catch muskies, especially big ones. So that's that's the that's the gist of it. We're in episode three. We're starting to get into some meaty topics. This is the point where y'all can get off the bus and stop listening because you don't like our opinions. But you know, we're just gonna wear them on our sleeves and lean into it, as we <laughs> said. <laughs> this is when the sponsors all leave. They're like, "Oh shit." Here we go. They just want to start a fight. <laughs> yeah, We're starting a fight with the walleye anglers. We're coming for you. We know where you live and we're coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> this is all good stuff. And you're, if you're still here along for the ride, chances are you'll be with us for a lot more episodes to come. I sure hope so. I sure hope so. Um, I think that's a good time to wrap. Um, like we said, this is one of the most underrated times of year to fish. You got so much to target. You do got to check regs. You cannot fish for muskies in Wisconsin, but trout, steelhead, pre-spawn bass, pike where it's legal, walleye where it's legal. Um, you, you got a lot of options. Um, so go do something. Go get out there. Muskie season is going to be here. You're going to hate your life, you know, or, you know, maybe if you're, if you're, this is the time of year where, you know, you got to, get those brownie points, get some of the, the housework done, yeah. <laughs> spend time with your family uh, because musky yes. season is coming. But uh, if you need to get out your Jones and Shack nasties are at all time high. Um, there's lots to do. There's a ton to do in Wisconsin. It's beautiful out there. You get to enjoy different parts of the state, different fish. And um, you know, we hope you, we hope you get after it and have some fun. If you got questions on gear, how to target them, um, where things are legal, you know, feel free to give us a shout, reach out to me or Josh. Um, otherwise, you know where to find us at Muskie Fool. Email, phones are at the shop. Um, and I guess on the podcast front, it's uh, just to just to wrap there. It's been a lot of fun to hear from everybody. Uh, I know you've gotten some messages, Josh. We've gotten some messages. Um, keep it coming. I mean, we, we love it. The feedback is awesome. Um, the folks reviewing the podcast, man, that, that makes us, that makes us smile. It really, really does. And, uh, what's keeps us going. Um, we've also got a lot of good ideas from everybody, um, things that you want to hear. I don't know if you got any to, sh to share or things that have really struck you, Josh, but keep it coming. You can go on the website, you can comment, you can comment on YouTube. Um, there's lots of different ways to, to make sure, uh, you know, you're letting us know what you want to hear. Yes, sir. That's really all I got, my man. Big thank you yep. to everybody that keeps listening. Big thank you to our sponsors. Josh, love you, buddy. Big thank you to you for coming in on the webcam. Uh, we'll hopefully get you back here in person soon. My pleasure, Dano. Can't wait to see you soon, brother. Likewise. Let's go. Let's go trout fishing. We're out. All right. Take it easy, folks. Thank you for listening to the Spot Burn Podcast.
Coming to you from the dungeon, this podcast is presented by Musky Fool Fly Fishing Co. We want to thank our awesome sponsors, Cortland Line Company and Stealth Craft Boats. We also want to thank all of you, our listeners, for tuning in, subscribing, sharing, and spreading the good word. If you haven't heard, go check us out at muskyfool.com. Have fun out there on the water, y'all.